Good morning, folks. The sun woke up eruptively over the last day. Still can't break the core of the earth facing quiet, however. We've got some big announcements to make, so let's not waste any time and come right over to spaceweathernews.com. Let's watch the eruptions kicking off with the pops visible from center disk over to the departing limb over on the right. The largest eruptions were unquestionably off the limb and are probably going to impact Mercury today. The two eruptive events on the Earth-facing disk were smaller, but still appeared to produce small CMEs. If they are detectable in the solar wind, they should arrive alongside the coronal hole stream from those dark patches. Geomagnetic activity is expected before next weekend. However, the solar flaring hasn't been able to do much more than small C flares with this uptick. No complex sunspot groups either, and the calm should continue. Solar wind speed is finally dropping out, so that high density is bunching rather than a new shock wave, and the lack of magnetic instability at Earth confirms that analysis. We're all calm here. Now, before these coronal holes directly impact Earth with more intense solar wind, these dark openings directly faced Earth yesterday, and we saw what is hopefully the peak of the seismic uptick, since been downgraded to 6.3. First article link you've got today is to a new solar dynamo model. While not an externally driven model, it clearly indicates a single circuit idea rather than internally generated and unconnected magnetic field setups. Interesting take. Second link is to new looks at Jupiter. Bunch of infrared images of our system's giant, allowing us to create temperature maps and do penetrative analyses beyond the cloud layers. Top weather news includes a tornado in Canada yesterday, a freak Australia storm that wasn't so unexpected by the observers who watched the alerts here for two days in advance. The Gulf system is strengthening but should die over Mexico in the coming days, perhaps after getting a name. And our focus is going to switch to the West Pacific with the next twin systems developing there. So folks, when you leave the Albuquerque Sunport and head north on the highway, your view of beautiful downtown is quickly eclipsed by an equally aesthetic venue just off the highway. It happens to be an Embassy Suites, and it will host the third iteration of the Observer's Conference, Observing the Frontier. It's going to be April 8th and 9th, 2017, and me, Billy, and Dr. Dunning have already confirmed our attendance, and there have been some key names at the EU conference this past weekend expressing strong interest. As promised, registration for the conference opens this week. Right now, website members have access to the conference page via the button on the right side of suspiciousobservers.org, and we have the most basic information needed to make your plans and actually register at those links on the right. This page will go public for open registration tonight. Members, this is your window to make sure we don't get into that sold-out situation we had last time. And by popular demand from your comments on both Observer's events and the first two conferences, I recognize that Kat plans these events way better than I do, and so she will be officially taking over the director's role of both the Mobile Observatory and Observing the Frontier. Registration is now open. We went classic today with the current global conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 2.55 a.m., and I'm going to promptly get out of this inferno and back to the high desert here today. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.